Okay, I am getting around to doing the further maths chapter summaries. And this is the first one from Core Pure Year One, Chapter One. And it's complex numbers. And I've written this note here. It's going to be for all of them for further maths. It is not possible for these chapter summaries to cover all the possible ways that examiners can assess the topic. This is really to kind of refresh your memory at the end of a playlist or at the end of a chapter. You've got to go and do exam questions for further maths because there are so many different ways that things can be asked about. So for complex numbers, we will start off with some arithmetic with complex numbers. And we obviously have some very basic things that we know about that I is the square root of minus one. So I squared is therefore minus one. And we know that if we have the Z as um, equal to A plus BI, then Z star, which is the conjugate of Z, is A minus BI. And obviously, you know where that gets used in lots of different ways here. So let's start off with some questions like this. It says here that if z is 3 minus 2i, find this thing, which is i brackets z plus 2 times by z conjugate minus 3i. And I'm actually just going to go straight in and just start, start substituting some things in. So z is 3 minus 2i. When I do the z conjugate, it's going to be a 3 plus 2i, as we just looked at on the right hand side. And then we'll have the minus 3i over there. I'm going to leave the i outside the bracket and I'll just tidy up what is inside the bracket here. Expanding these brackets, we get a 6 plus 4i. And then we have the minus 3i. And then as you know what to do with this, we collect the like terms. So the like terms, we have the imaginary parts and we have the real parts. The real parts is a 3 and a 6. So that is just going to be our 9. We have minus 2 plus 4 minus 3. Well, that's just going to be minus i, I believe. Yeah, minus 2 plus 4, that's 2. 2 minus 3 is minus i. Last thing is just to multiply it by i. So we have the 9 times by i, which is obviously just going to be our 9i. And then we have a minus i times by i, which is minus i squared. And we know that i squared is minus 1. So actually, I can rewrite this as 9i minus minus 1. In other words, it is 9i plus 1. But conventionally, we would write this as 1 plus 9i. Now, you probably didn't need this many steps over here. You probably could have gone straight from expanding the brackets straight down to this line here. OK, so we're now going to have a look at a different kind of question. And in this box here, I've got a little reminder for us that we can compare the real and imaginary parts of the left hand side and the right hand side of an equation. So we have been told that this thing here, when it expands, it is equivalent to 8 plus bi. And we're going to find the values of a and the values of b. Well, I'm going to start by doing some bracket expansion on the left. I'm going to begin by timesing both of these things by 2a. So by 2a would give me an 8a and then a minus 4a squared i. Great, I've done that multiplied by 2a with these. I'm now going to do them multiplied by minus 3i. So 4 times minus 3i is minus 12i. And then I might take this a bit slower, but I wouldn't expect you to have to do this when you're doing your final kind of preparation for exams. I'm going to just multiply them fully with the i squared in, OK? So the negative 3 and the negative 2 will give me a plus. So it's going to be a plus 6, and there's an a. And there's an i squared, and that is equal to 8 plus bi. Now, probably you could have just gone straight in and said this i squared is going to make this become a negative, and you didn't need this extra line. So it is going to be an 8i. We then have a minus 4a squared i minus 12i, and I just said this would be a minus 6a is equal to 8 plus bi. And we can compare, as I said over here, the real and imaginary parts of the equation that we've got, okay? So for the real part, the eight that we have here, this is real and this is real, which tells me that eight a minus six a, which is obviously just two a, is equal to eight. So if two a is equal to eight, then a is equal to four, which then tells me for the imaginary parts, which are these parts, must be equal to b. So this means that the minus 4a squared and the minus 12 must just be equal to b, the imaginary part that comes with it. Now I know that a is equal to 4, so I can do minus 4 multiplied by 4 squared minus 12, which is equal to b. I will be lazy and do this on my calculator, so it's minus 4 times by 64 minus 12, that's minus 76. So b is equal to minus 76 and a was equal to 4. OK, we're now going to have a look at some division by complex numbers. In other words, what we call realizing the denominator. So here we are taking two complex numbers and we are dividing them. But what we're going to do is realize the denominator. To realize the denominator, 
all you do is you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator's conjugate. So for this particular one that we've got here, we're going to try and write this um, in the form a plus bi, where a and b are in terms of x and y. Well, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Now, the conjugate of the denominator is going to be 2y plus xi. And if I'm doing the same thing to the top and the bottom, this fraction that I've just added in over here is just like multiplying by 1, so it's not actually changing the size. You don't need these extra brackets, but I put them in to remind me that when I do this expansion, I'm doing double bracket expansion. So for the numerator, I'm going to start off by multiplying both of these things by 4x. So I will get an 8xy and then a 4x squared i. Now I'm going to multiply both of these things by minus 2yi. So that's going to be a minus 4y squared i. And then I'm going to have, see if I can do this all in one step here, it would be a minus 2xy i squared, a minus 2xy i squared, because of the i squared, it's going to change it to a plus that we get for this part, okay? And then for the denominator that we have, very wonky line I've just drawn there, um, we're just going to know there's a shortcut for these kinds of things. You're only going to need to do this one times this one and this one times this one because the other parts will always cancel out. It's a bit like doing rationalizing the denominator that we have. So the 2y times the 2y is the 4y squared. Let's again see if I can do this a bit quicker. We have a minus x times by a plus x or a minus xi times a plus xi. Well, it would be a minus x squared, but because of the i times the i, we're going to go instead of a minus x squared, we will get a plus x squared instead. So all you need to do is a bit of tidying up the real and the imaginary parts. So for the real bits that we've got in the numerator, you can see that we have an 8xy and a 2xy, which will simplify to a 10xy. And the imaginary parts, well, I have a 4x squared minus 4y squared, both being multiplied by i, and that whole thing is being divided by 4y squared plus x squared. Last thing is to kind of make it look exactly as it is over here with the a plus b i. So I'm just going to separate it into a real and an imaginary part really, really clearly. So the real part will be a 10xy. I probably would switch it and do x squared plus 4y squared just to have it kind of in alphabetical order, but you wouldn't be penalized if you didn't do that. And then for the imaginary part, we're going to have 4x squared minus 4y squared over x squared plus 4y squared I. So we can see that the A that we were looking for is this part and the B that we were looking for is this thing that we've got here. Okay, last thing that I think we would look at from chapter one is this, which is our solving quadratics, cubics and quartics. Okay, there's lots and lots of methods that you can do for this. And there's actually going to be even more once you've got to the roots of polynomials chapter. So I'm going to use a particular method and I'll maybe just suggest one other method that you could use as well. So we've got this function here. Oh, no, let me talk about this box, okay? So complex roots always come in complex conjugate pairs. So if you get one complex root, you can very quickly work out what another root is guaranteed to be because it will be its complex conjugate. And then this kind of doesn't really feel that further math specific, right? It's just if we know that we have a root of a function, when you substitute that thing into the function, you get zero. And we also know that z minus that root is a factor of it. This is also something that comes up in A-level maths in AS level as well, okay? So we have this equation that we've got here, and we are going to be solving... It says, sorry, f of z is z cubed minus z squared plus pz plus 39. And it tells us that one of the roots is 2 plus 3i. We're going to use algebra to find the two other roots and the value of p. So I'm just going to start off by doing my most obvious root, which is if 2 plus 3i is a root, then so is 2 minus 3i. Now, what you could do if you wanted to immediately, if you wanted to find out p, because we know that this is a root, I could substitute it in here. I could cube it, subtract it squared. I could do it multiplied by p and plus 39 and make it equal zero. And it would tell me what p is equal to. I'm just going to do a different method I think people would be more familiar with. But that method of substitution of taking one of the roots and subbing it in would find out p very quickly. But I'm going to use this other approach. So because these are both roots, then I know that z minus this root is going to be a factor and z minus this root is going to be a factor. So this means that z minus 2 minus 3i is a factor 
And we also have that z for the second one minus 2 plus 3i is a factor. So if I can expand both of these things, I know that it will be a factor of this thing, which might allow me to factorize the whole thing and find out the third root, which, by the way, we know has to be a real root because it always has to come in complex conjugate pairs. You couldn't have another complex root because it wouldn't have a pair that could go with it because it is a cubic. OK, I'm getting a bit distracted here. Let's do this expansion. I'll go pretty quick here. I'm going to multiply everything in the second bracket by z. So that's z squared minus 2z plus 3zi. I'll do everything in the second bracket times by minus 2. So that's minus 2z plus 4 minus 6i. And then I'll do everything in the second bracket multiplied by minus 3i. So that's minus 3zi plus 6i. I then have minus 9i squared, which just becomes a plus 9 because of that bit that we have uh, with the i squared, making it go from negative to positive or vice versa. And you'll notice the minus 6i and the 6i cancel, the minus 3zi and the plus 3z cancel. So we are left with z squared minus 4z plus 4 plus 9, which is 13. So now I know that z squared minus 4z plus 13 is a factor of f of z. So f of z that we have here is z cubed minus z squared plus pz plus 39. And I know that this can be re rewritten with this thing as a factor. So I'm going to put it like this. And I know if it's going to be a cubic, right, there's got to be a z to get the z cubed part at the beginning. And we just need to figure out what this number is going to be. Well, there's only one option because of the fact this is a 39 and this is a 13. That must be a positive 3 that we have here. So I can now say, hence, minus 3 is the third root. And our final challenge here now is to find out what the value of p is equal to. I can just expand this and I can compare it to this side and see what we get. So let's do the expansion on this right hand side. I'm probably going to run out of a bit of a space, a space here. So maybe I'll grab this and I'll just put that there. OK, oh, we've got some new stuff coming up from GoodNotes telling me what's going on. So when I expand by the z plus 3, everything times by z, it's going to be z cubed minus 4z squared plus 13z and times everything by 3, 3z squared minus 12z plus 39. So I do have the z cubed. For the z squareds, I get a minus z squared. For the z's, I get a plus z, and then I get a plus 39. And just doing a quick bit of like, almost like spot the difference here, you can see that they've both got z cubed, they both have minus z squared, they both have the plus 39, and so the only thing that's different is this one is pz, and this one is just z, which means that p must be equal to 1. So p is equal to 1, and the roots are 2 plus 3i, 2 minus 3i, and minus 3. Now, like I said, there are other ways of doing this. I perhaps could have done a version where I took this and substituted it in and very quickly found out what p was. And then you can go from there as well. There's lots and lots of different ways of going about this. But because it said use algebra, I couldn't find p and then just solve it on the calculator. I did need to do some element of like division and things like that. And also this part here, when I quickly figured out this had to be a z plus 3, you could have done this thing algebraically divided by, sorry, you could have, yeah, you could have done it algebraically divided by this thing. I just think it's a lot longer. So for further math, we're trying to kind of spot some of these shortcuts that we have here. Okay, so that's everything from chapter one on complex numbers. I should also mention that each year I do run something called the Bison Maths Award. Um, if you just kind of search for that on YouTube, you will find out a bit of information about that. It's an opportunity to win a scholarship from me. And that is currently live right now, if you've seen the video when it's published. But even if you're watching this in a couple of years' time, it is something I'm hoping to run every year. So good luck with your studies, guys, and I'll see you in another video sometime soon.